All right, the title of today's lecture is Bone Histology. Does anybody recall what the word histology means? Yes. Histology? Very simply, the study of tissues. And recall from our levels of organization, atoms to molecules, molecules to organelles, organelles to cells, cells to tissues. Tissues are groups of cells that are working together for a common function. So we're looking at that here in the bone. Now, bone matrix, and there's a lot of ways we can define this, but very simply, that means bone material. So it's called a matrix because it kind of weaves back and forth and has, has fibers that are interwoven and it makes like a matrix. But bone material uh, is made of three main things. It has three primary components. And in your studies, by weight, number one, you found them to be what? Cells would be number three as far as weight, but yes, absolutely. That's right, calcium phosphate. <laughs> I didn't want you guys to struggle too long. Calcium phosphate, technically it's tricalcium phosphate, it's CA3PO4 and then a two on the outside of that. Perhaps I shouldn't have started with that parenthesis as it's confusing with the other one, but yeah, that's it. Tricalcium phosphate. This guy right here is basically like rock. In fact, go ahead and put that. Rock or concrete. It's really, really rigid. Okay. This makes two-thirds of the bone's weight. Now, here's the trouble with calcium phosphate. It's really hard, which is good, but things like calcium phosphate or like rock have a very low shear modulus, which means um, their shear strength is really weak. Like if I had a small column, let's say a centimeter around of concrete, I tapped it with a hammer, it would snap over because it's really hard but really brittle because there's no flexibility to it. So bone solves this trouble, or the cells in bone solve this trouble by adding this second thing. Who knows what this is? collagen fibers and collagen you probably heard about collagen injections so people's lips can look fabulous you know and so on and so forth collagen is a protein pretty big protein too collagen fibers are proteins that that uh, basically add some tensile strength so that there is there is the ability for bone to flex without snapping okay this accounts for about a third of bones weight. I like to use this analogy. Um, if if uh, collagen fibers uh, and calcium phosphate, they work together and it reminded me of something. And, and what it reminded me of was when they pour concrete, like for bridges and buildings and stuff like that, before they pour the concrete, what do they put down? Forms, of course. What else? Yeah, mold on the outside. But they're going to put something that will rebar. be... Rebar. Yes, rebar. St rebar stands for steel reinforcement bar. It's there for a reason, for the same reason. See, concrete is very rigid, but there's no flexibility to it. So we need, we need something that has that, that, that strength to be bent, but not broken to weave throughout it. And so in, in concrete structures and in bone the same way, this thing in this case would be more like rebar, collagen fibers, because they reinforce that calcium phosphate and make bone both strong and somewhat flexible. So it flexes before it would snap. Now cells, though there's a lot of cells, by weight, they're not quite as much as this, but the cells are the ones that are cranking out these collagen fibers. The cells are ones that are making sure that there is this calcium phosphate in place. They're the workers. 
and they're more or less stuck in this uh, matrix helping out the process but they only account they count for less than two percent of a bones weight I just thought of a way for you to remember that calcium and milk two percent that's the good milk it is I know that's that's propaganda but two percent milk is way better than skim milk it just tastes better all right next no we're at we're at cells right now so let's talk about cells there are a few different types of cells in bone first one is the cell whose name means bone cell that's called an osteocyte this guy builds and repairs bone matrix within a lacuna lacuna matata this should beg the question my dear students what's a lacuna you just gonna throw a word like lacuna out there and not address it no I should address it uh, here's what a lacuna is something that would be terrifying for a human being basically these are brick layers and they brick they, they they build brick structure around them until they build themselves a place that's exactly the size of their body basically they trap themselves in concrete and they love it I think it's great I, named it I love it I love it here's what they look like gang here's your bone material here is a single osteocyte right there and only one lives in a lacuna they, everyone has their own little lacuna and it builds this bone around it it's keeping that structure sound okay. and so it's a little terrifying but they love it they think it's great in fact if they ever get free of it all they do is build until they try to make another one if they do get free of the lacuna, a bone break or something happens where they end up on the loose, they change into this. An osteoblast. Okay? They build and repair bone matrix. Oh, my bad. Right on the line. Bone matrix. Outside of lacuna. So they are still doing the same job, but they are not stuck within that structure. That's the major distinction between osteocytes and osteoblasts. They look different too because they're not squished in that little spot. So they have the same thing. In fact, if an osteoblast builds up bone matrix all around itself, guess what it becomes? An osteocyte. Okay third one here is an osteogenic cell osteogenic if you read the online text osteoprogenitor if you read the white textbook it doesn't matter it's the same cell osteogenic or osteoprogenitor is a stem cell that creates the other two types a stem cell that creates the other two types now these three are related a stem cell if you've heard that word before especially like in the media and in, in political realms and whatnot stem cell is basically a cell that has the ability to make other types of cells that are different than itself. Um, here, they can really only make these three, okay? But still, that's you know this one's slightly different, and so on and so forth. These three are related. 
because any one of these, this one can create any one of those types and any one of these can become one of the other types. It's pretty, pretty intense. These are related. Now, the fourth guy right here, not in the family. Osteoclast. When you think class, I want you to hear the word clash because it does a job that is the opposite of the work that they're trying to do. See, these other cells are working diligently to build new bone matrix. What's this guy doing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This guy is breaking down bone. The word they used was resorbing. This seems like a good question. Why in the world would you want one of those? Let alone thousands of them. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you answer that, let me tell you something else about him. He's huge. They have 50 plus nuclei. Most cells, if they even have one, you know, they you know, get one nucleus. This guy gets 50 of them and, or more. It's an enzyme-making, bone-eating machine. It's Wreck-It Ralph right here. That's who this is. I'm going to wreck it. And he does. Just fix it, Felix, right here. <laughs> wreck it, Ralph. All right? So why in the world do we want this guy on staff? We want to hire a guy who destroys bone. Let's get a bunch of them. Let's make them huge. Why? Apologize to our viewers at home. <laughs> We're going to wait this one out. Don't be afraid to be wrong. Mm -hmm. this bad bone is like infected or something? You got the right idea. I'd lose the word infected. What could make bone bad? Free. Yes. If bone is. Bone encounters a tremendous amount of stress. Every day. Think about what your skeleton goes through from the time you woke up today and jumped out of bed. Just that task, the fact your femurs and, and tibia were underneath the weight of your skeleton. My skeleton, for crying out loud, I'm standing on my bones. I weigh like too much. <laughs> I thought I was going to tell you, didn't you? All right, so here's the deal. There's little micro fractures and little tiny uh, weakened areas that continually happen in bone because of the fact that your bones encounter so much stress. So osteoclast, Wreck-It Ralph here goes through and eats all the areas that are weakened to create spots for these guys to fill in new healthy bone material. Just like the highway, gang. Highway 55, they poured it a long time ago, but if you've ever driven Highway 55 to, to from here to St. Louis or back, it's pretty much going to be one of those situations where you're going to expect construction. They're going to be breaking up certain parts of the road and replacing it for the same reason. It gets used. It gets worn down. Stress is on that concrete. They have to keep replacing it. Your bone is the same way. This is the crew that comes by and wrecks. This is the crew that comes by and rebuilds it. Here's the trouble, though, gang. As we age, it is hormones that tell these guys, hey, go to work. Build stuff back. And as the hormones diminish, they stop doing the work as much. No one tells Wreck-It Ralph to stop. <laughs> they can't. He eats them. No, I don't know. That. That's not necessarily true. Don't write that down. So as we age, our cells that devour bone work faster than our cells that build it back, particularly in postmenopausal women. And this condition is known as osteoporosis literally it means pores developing in your bone okay now I'm gonna end with just a couple of different fracture types today okay so classifications of fracture classifications of fracture two questions that you ask one Is it lined up? Is the snapped part of bone still 
lined up where it's supposed to be or is it not lined up okay all right so if it's not lined up here this is called displaced not lined up okay logically the opposite of that should be what placed that would be great it's not though it's a double negative it is non displaced either not lined up or not not lined up I know right okay non displaced lined up okay the second category of fracture to consider is is it sticking through the skin that's really gross you probably have seen videos on YouTube where this has happened to somebody bone breaks sharp piece of bone punches through the skin okay yes that is called a compound fracture No, even if the bone is like a powder, it's crushed into nothing. It's still considered simple as long as it's not sticking through the skin. I don't know if this is how it got its name, but this is how I think of it. This one is compounded with the risk of infection because it's sticking through the skin. This one is still simple because everything's contained. It's not going to be infected. I don't know if that's how it got its name. That's just the di difference, compound or simple. And that's it for today.